Today we have an obvious historical diorama miniature set. Uh, this was brought to you by my Patreon people who voted for it. Thank you very much for the support. And this is a limited edition miniature from Warlord Gains, now out of print, but you can find it on eBay. It is called It's Just a Flesh Wound, and I think it's from some silly movie or whatnot. So we have two miniatures in this little mini diorama. We have King of the Who against some undetermined color knight. And I went into this with the concept in my head of using uh, all warm colors on the king and then reserving cool colors for the knight. At least that was my working theory. Starting off with the king's tunic, uh, which is going to be it's supposed to be white, uh, it's a bit more off-white in the movie, it gets very dirty, and I wasn't sure how white I wanted to take it, so I decided to start at a fairly uh, more beige color with a rocky sand, and then just work up to pale sand, and finally uh, a little white. A little excessive in the layers here, but sometimes, you know, when you're not sure of what color, you want to uh, eventually end up with, you know, a few extra layers is okay until you finally reach a point where you say, okay, I'm going to stop now. Our king has a lot of gold on him, but to add a bit more variety to the miniature, his chainmail I decided to paint a little bit darker, so the gold bits that are on the miniature will stand out a bit more. Also from this point on, virtually every other part of the miniature is going to be a brown tone. So to begin with, I painted all those areas, undercoated them with a Vallejo model color camo black brown. So that's gonna serve as a basis for all our other colors. Now with the boots, we have a bit of a problem. In the movie, he's actually wearing chainmail leggings. So the texture on the boots should be the same as the rest of the chainmail on the miniature. However, for some reason they sculpted this with just smooth leather boots. Now we have two options here. First of all, we could paint it with the same metallics we used on the rest of the chainmail. However, because the area is smooth, it's gonna look obviously different. We could try stippling a pattern on, but again, it's gonna look obviously different. So instead, I decided to go paint it with a somewhat similar color of the chain mail, but just using non-metallic paints. Uh, but also I didn't want it so similar 
as to uh, be exactly matching in a non-metallic tone. And I figure it was safer to go a little bit darker than what we used on the chainmail. Metallic paint, as you should know by now, uh, has little solid bits of shiny material in them, meaning that uh, they don't cover as smoothly as uh, just regular paint. So we have to put a undercoat underneath it, or in this case, mix a non-metallic paint in with it. So that's why we have leather brown mixed with glorious gold. And then once that brownish layer is down, we can go ahead and apply a regular layer of straight glorious gold and then work on the highlights. So it covers a lot faster and it makes our gold much more intense. Two carefully applied washes of sepia ink give some definition to the gold areas. It's always good to use two washes, letting the first one dry completely, because metallics tend to be a little bit wash resistant sometimes. So the first one is kind of putting a, a prep layer down, adds a little bit of color, and then we can apply a second coat a little bit more carefully, just in the recesses to intensify the contrast and the color. A bit of artistic license applied to the trim. I went with a much more yellow color than what's shown in the movie. In the movie, uh, this would be more of a, a brown ochre, a yellow ochre color. Uh, I went with a brighter yellow uh, because I wanted to stand out a bit more uh, because we were working in a smaller scale. And also, we already use a lot of browns on this miniature, so painting this area with the yellow ochre would blend it more in with the, the gold and the boots, which we want to avoid. For the steel, in a normal situation, I would use a little bit of blue ink as well as black to add a little color and a little bit of shade. However, since uh, I was still trying to keep the king to just using all warm colors, uh, I ended up just using straight black. Uh, another option would be to add a little brown, but again, we used a lot of brown on this miniature and I didn't want his weapons and armor to look dirty. We finish off with a dark line of camo black brown to really define the edges of the tunic. And I decided I wanted a little bit more dirt, a little bit more contrast in the white. So I applied a very extremely thin glaze in a few of the recessed areas. This is not the ideal color to be using on white. I was kind of saving time here because I already had it on the palette. So I have to be careful here and just you can see it's extremely thin paint, basically just water with a hint of camo black brown in it. Otherwise, if it's too strong, it's going to darken our white way too much. So here's where my idea of using just cool colors on the night kind of falls apart a bit. Uh, using just a soft blue here, more of a bluish gray color with the shadow gray. And my idea was to use uh, more intense blue highlights on like the boots area for example however it looked a bit too cartoony and took away from the ironically realism of the scene so the tunic and the boots were both painted uh, using shadow gray and black and then for the leggings again to just add some variety to the miniature that was using a different mix and i painted those more as a very dark gray The 
while I'm only showing one layer here, there is actually a total of five highlights, no wait, three highlights, in with the German gray and neutral gray, adding a little bit more neutral gray each time. The knight's armor is very dark and very dirty, so we want to go with a mix of black and gunmetal here, the black to darken the gunmetal. And then for the highlights, we are going to do a combination, kind of a, a half stipple, half dry brush to get a more pitted look. So it's going to look drastically different in color, but also in application from the king. And then a stipple wash of black and brown ink for a bit more shade and a bit of dirt. And again, kind of fell off my idea of just using cool colors on the night. Realized it was kind of necessary just to add uh, a little bit more grime to the armor. On to the base. The miniature comes with a little puny uh, display base, which I tossed and decided to do something a bit more dynamic. A uh, little cheap plastic plinth that I got from somewhere I have no idea where, uh, covered with green stuff, and then I used a happy seppuku, uh, I think it was a forest ground stamp, uh, just to press that into the base. The scene in the movie that I'm recreating here is basically, it's just a carpet of fallen leaves. So we're gonna use a lot of leaves on this base. Forest litter, I unfortunately can't tell you the manufacturer, I don't know. Uh, we have white glue mixed in to stick it on, and then Vallejo matte medium mixed in to take away the sheen of the white glue. And I have it pretty watery here so we can smooth the leaves out as flat as I can. A little bit too watery so I'm placing it and down and then using a dryer brush to kind of suck up some of the excess moisture. Just a wee bit of blood added to the miniature. I don't usually like adding blood to miniatures. I'm not squeamish. It's just not a look that I really like but I decided to add a little bit uh, Vallejo Game Color Gory Red mixed with some gloss varnish. This is applied after the entire model is flat varnished. 
So just a little bit on the end of the sword and a little bit in the arm stump pits. And there we go, an epic battle between good and evil, or stupid and slightly less stupid. Other than that, I really don't have a whole lot to say about the project. Um, since we're copying a scene from a movie, there's a limit about the amount of variety you can add to it. Uh, you can always do some little tweaks like we did with the yellow trim, but if you go too extreme, like painting the Black Knight green or something, that's obviously going to stand out and people are going to call you on that. And my paint job came out, I'd say okay. Or at the very least, it doesn't look like he has shit all over him. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. You are as amoebas, but do not be afraid.